The Wuhan Institute of Virology is the lab under investigation by international intelligence agencies examining whether an accidental leak may have started the global pandemic. Tonight, we have new information that will be of great interest to the probe announced by US President Joe Biden. We can show you footage from inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology and interviews with the very scientists at the heart of one of the greatest cover-ups the world has ever seen. How did the COVID-19 global pandemic start? Did the virus derived from bats end up in the Wuhan lab, causing an inadvertent leak? Or was there an infected worker? Evidence from this footage will shed more light on some of these questions. The Wuhan Institute of Virology was built by the Chinese and French governments in a deal designed to promote international scientific research. As you can see, French and Chinese leaders attend a ceremony marking the signing of the agreement. And China's President Xi Jinping visits a level four lab in France. For the first time we hear, there were intense clashes behind the scenes. That admission from the Deputy Director of the Wuhan National Biosafety Level 4 Lab, Song Dongling, in this extraordinary video produced by the Chinese Academy of Sciences back in May 2017. The video marks the launch of the laboratory. It's called Persistence Unyielding, the construction and research team of the Wuhan National Biosafety Level 4 Laboratory. In this video, Song also admits they had no prior experience in the area of biosafety, yet they were dealing with some of the world's most dangerous pathogens. No prior experience, yet they were genetically manipulating bat coronaviruses in highly dangerous experiments. After relying on the French government to both fund and build the lab, when it was complete, the French were immediately kicked out. The French government was furious as this was supposed to be a centre of international cooperation and it raised alarm bells in French intelligence. There were grave concerns about what the scientists could be hiding and what biological research they intended to conduct. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, there's been worldwide scrutiny on the Wuhan Institute of Virology its scientists, its experiments, and its laboratories. This newly unearthed video features an interview with Shi Zheng Li, the director of emerging infectious diseases, from before she famously became known as the Batwoman. And we learn for the first time just how many bat samples Shi Zheng Li's team had collected. Shi Zheng Li Yanjiu Tuan Dui, Shinian Ru Yi Ji, Zai Wa Guo, Chi Fei Zhou Du Di Cai Qi, Yi Wan Wu Qing Yu Fen, Bian Fu Yang Pin, Zhui Song Sars Bing Du Yuan Tou, Bing Fen Li Chu, Du Zhong Xin Xing Bing Du. Fifteen thousand bat samples. The Wuhan Institute of Virology's virus databases were all wiped from the internet starting on September 12, 2019. Shi Li claimed they had been the subject of hacking attempts, but they've never been re-uploaded or made available to any investigating agencies. Even worse, the World Health Organization experts investigating the origin of the pandemic didn't even ask for access to the virus database. As one of the team, Peter Dajic confirms here while others nod their heads. I, I asked um, the question in front of the whole team, both sides, while we're at the Institute, Wuhan Institute of Virology, about the um, so-called missing database. And um, what we were told by Shi Jung Li was that it had been, there'd been hacking attempts on it, about 3,000 hacking attempts, and they took down this Excel spreadsheet database. 
um, absolutely reasonable. Um, uh, we did not ask to see the data. It is shocking. The World Health Organization didn't even ask for access to this database, which in 2017 may have had over 15,000 bat samples. This amazing video I'm bringing you tonight has been unearthed by a team of underground detectives who relentlessly investigate the origins of COVID-19. They call themselves drastic. Their contribution to the origins question has been arguably greater than that made by intelligence agencies or government officials, who very sadly, until only recently, treated this crucial issue of how the virus started as a cold case. Or perhaps they just accepted the line that it was a naturally occurring virus, even though COVID-19 has claimed 3.7 million lives and counting. One of Drastic's members, Jesse, a digital archivist, made this video discovery along with the group's coordinator, who goes by a pseudonym of Billy Bostickson for safety reasons. Billy's written a research paper delving into the question of whether the Wuhan lab kept live bats. This question has been hotly contested since the early days of the outbreak. Peter Dajic, who I just showed you didn't ask for the virus database when he visited Wuhan, has also denied there were bats kept at the Wuhan lab. In a December 2020 tweet, he said, no bats were sent to Wuhan lab for genetic analysis of viruses collected in the field. That's not how science works. We collect bat samples, send them to the lab. We release bats where we catch them. Then in a second December 2020 tweet, he repeated the claim again. He said, this is a widely circulated conspiracy theory. This piece describes work I'm the lead on and labs I've collaborated with for 15 years. They do not have live or dead bats in them. There is no evidence anywhere that this happened. It's an error that I hope will be corrected. Well, tonight, explosive footage from inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology indicates his statements are wrong. It is not a conspiracy to say there were live bats at the lab. It is a fact. And as you can see, this video shows bats in a cage at the Wuhan Institute. You can also see there a researcher feeding a bat with a worm. And in this image, we can see researchers out capturing bats and a bat even hangs off a researcher's hat. In another image, there are mouse cages, hundreds of them. We know that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was using humanized mice for experiments to see which coronaviruses could infect humans. In some experiments, they used the humanized mice to make viruses that couldn't previously infect humans do exactly that. These experiments called gain of function aim to make viruses more infectious and more virulent to try and predict which may cause a pandemic. This footage, had it been available early last year, may have reshaped the entire narrative around the potential origin of COVID-19. Back then we were told there were no bats at the lab, but we were told that disease-ridden bats were sold and butchered at the wet market. You'll remember this led to calls from presidents and prime ministers the world over to shut down wet markets and videos did the rounds of Chinese people eating bat soup. In fact, bats were never sold at the Wuhan wet market and the videos were nonsense. Dajic must have realized his public statements from December 2020 were wrong when he claimed it was a conspiracy to say there were bats in the Wuhan lab. He said, we didn't ask them if they had bats. I wouldn't be surprised if like many other virology labs, they were trying to set up a bat colony. I know it's happening in labs here and in other countries. That was just June, 2021. Had governments known a year and a half ago there were live bats at the Wuhan lab, this would have been crucial information when they were making their assessments about how the virus may have leaked. Dajic is also the scientist who organized, drafted and signed the letter in the Lancet that said it was a conspiracy to suggest the virus may have leaked from a lab. 
while investigating my book, What Really Happened in Wuhan, I discovered that Dajik was invited to brief the FBI and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence at a meeting on February 3rd, 2020, in the earliest days of the outbreak. Misinformation was a key topic at that meeting. He's also now leading The Lancet's own investigation into the origins issue. He's co-authored scientific papers with Shi Zheng Li and gone bat sampling with her. And he's funded her research with grants from Anthony Fauci's NIH. His very involvement in the World Health Organization investigation was an extreme conflict of interest. Given his initial denials about the presence of bats in the Wuhan lab, a fact I've just shown is false, how can the entire World Health Organization and its report be trusted at all? How can the investigation The Lancet is now doing be trusted? Not long after Dajik and others who'd worked with Shi Zheng Li briefed the intelligence community, they released a statement saying the virus was not made. The intelligence community also concurs with the wide scientific consensus that the COVID-19 virus was not man-made or genetically modified. That statement from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence on the 30th of April last year. This statement is very clearly false. It always was false. There is no scientific, scientific consensus that the virus had a natural origin. It's something Flinders University professor Nikolai Petrovsky pointed out over a year ago. Better adapted to infect humans than, than any other animal. And that's surprising because it, it, it you know, we're not aware that it, it actually has ad, um, had the opportunity to, do, to adapt to this human receptor before. So it really looked like this was a virus that, that is optimally designed to infect humans. Peter Dajic's conflicts are clear. He is compromised and should never have been involved in briefing the White House or its intelligence agencies or investigating the origin on behalf of the World Health Organization. He personally thanked Anthony Fauci in an email when Fauci publicly said the virus was natural. Fauci himself is also riddled with conflicts, given it was grants from his own agency that funded this dangerous research in Wuhan. He should never have been allowed to give any advice or any briefings on this issue of gain of function to the White House. Yet he's the top medical advisor to the president on the coronavirus, and he told the public this was a natural virus. He only changed his tune recently, even though he knew at the time, we know there was advice to him at the time, that the sequences of SARS-CoV-2 looked like they may have been genetically manipulated. Let's quickly recap why Fauci said just last week that he funded this research in China. So you don't want to go to Hoboken, New Jersey, or to Fairfax, Virginia, to be studying the bat-human interface that might lead to an outbreak. So you go to China. Now, to finish, here's where the video gets even more concerning. In one of the biggest revelations, it even discusses the technical support that's in place in case there are any accidents. Let's just hear that last bit again. An admission that accidents do happen in laboratories. They are common. They have cameras set up to capture any accidents. I'm guessing the World Health Organization didn't ask to see the security footage from October when there was a blackout at the compound or from September when the virus databases were suddenly pulled offline. In the video, there is also the promise of transparency with the world. The statement would be laughable if it wasn't so deeply tragic.
，中国科学院武汉病毒研究所将构建集高等级生物安全实验室、生物资源库和大数据中心为一体的世界一流大型科技共享平台。But instead of a world-class facility intent on sharing their latest discoveries, the laboratory kicked out the French at the first opportunity and shut its doors. And now, since the outbreak, we have seen an extreme and breathtaking cover-up from China in relation to this laboratory and the viruses the scientists were working on. We have also seen senior scientists who were supposed to be advising the World Health Organization. Supposed to be investigating the origin of the pandemic, allow China's propaganda to continue unchallenged, and fail to truly interrogate whether the virus was a lab creation, or whether it naturally made the jump from a bat to a human, perhaps from one of the bats that were inside cages at the Wuhan Institute of Virology itself. For my full investigation on this, you can order my book, What Really Happened in Wuhan, on Amazon.